welcome to the show. Hello, hello. This is Jeridia, your host from Legal Conversation Show. How are you today? Thank you for joining us. Remind everybody to follow us on Facebook and on all our social media, which is YouTube, Instagram, and in the future, it's going to be LinkedIn. Uh, also, please remember that if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to put it on the comment box or send us a direct message. Uh, today guest is uh, Mr. Chinidui Bokwe. Thank you again for joining us and for educating the community. Thank you for having me. Uh, Nedu represents individuals in criminal cases, immigration, PI. What else, Nedu? What else am I missing? We do some civil work, pretty civil much any work. kind of litigation. And family law? Well, yeah, we have now. someone that does family law, yes. Because your law firm specializes more on it's more in immigrants, right? So it's Correct. more like an immigrant cl clinic. Yes. You help them as cases go by. Or? We're a full service firm for immigrants, not on everything, but matters affecting immigrants are very, very personal to us, and we take pride in making sure that we afford them the best legal defense and legal solution available. Okay, well. Today, I know you have a lot of cases on immigration. You have a lot of experience with immigration cases, right? That is correct. And then one of the biggest topics or cases that are popular, I will say, are asylum cases. That is correct. Now, today we want to talk about exactly what asylum is, who qualifies, and what are the requirements, what's the process. We have a lot of questions for that. So I'm going to ask you some questions. You ready for that? Yes. We're going to ask you six questions, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first one is, what is asylum? Asylum is a protection that the United States provides to people that are fleeing their countries uh -huh. due to persecution or threat. So it's a benefit that the United States came up with in conjunction with the United Nations. So there's refugee asylum and then there's United States asylum which is governed by the laws of the US and it's a protection that is in place to help people who are fleeing their country due to threat or harm because of their political opinion, religion, social group, ethnicity or national origin. Okay, thank you for explaining that. The second question that we have is, what is the difference between a refugee and an asylum? Well, the refugee is mostly controlled by the United Nations and the rules under the UNHCR. Um, it's essentially the same. The difference is with refugees, they are people that are seeking asylum in their own country and sometimes it's people who are either in a war-torn country or a disabled country where they set up refugee camps and people stay in the camps and as refugees trying to get to the United States. Okay, so that's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, number three, question number three. What are the requirements to file for asylum? Well, when you decide to pursue asylum in the United States and in the United States, the first thing that is required is that you have to be in, you have to have a fear you have to be afraid to return to your country okay. the second thing that's very very important is that you have to file the asylum within one year of stepping foot in the united states it's very very important because if you do not do that then you lose your asylum before you start of course with asylum there's other relief that attached to it in the united states like withholding of removal and convention against torture they will not consider you for asylum, but they will consider you for those two reliefs if you file it after one year. Of course, there's an exception to that one year requirement, which you have to prove that there was a exceptional reason that you couldn't file. You know, and it wasn't um, your fault and that within a reasonable time you filed. It's very difficult to prove. It's not something people should rely on. So your suggestion is? File it within the one year of coming in within one year no more than a year period what if you today is my year and i filed today you'll be fine as long as you file it within that one year okay okay and the year doesn't start counting until after your 18th birthday oh 
after your 18th birthday. Okay, so if you're my under 18, it doesn't count. But Correct. over 18, it does count. Correct. Okay, so no more than a year less um, if you're over 18. Correct. All right. Um, Additionally, mm -hmm. so you have to have the fear, then you have to have to file it within the one year. That's a requirement. Because the second requirement is that your fear has to be on protected ground, which is political opinion or political group, okay. race, religion, social group, or national origin or ethnicity. That has to be one of the reasons for your fear. Otherwise, you don't qualify for asylum. Additionally, you have to prove that there's no safe third country that you could be sent back and that is not feasible for you to internally relocate in your country. Third country? Correct. Meaning. So if I'm from Mexico and then I'm seeking asylum in the U.S., that means there's no another country where I can go. Correct. I can go to Canada. If you were in Mexico and then you move to Canada and stay in Canada, and then from Canada you come to the U.S. and seek asylum in the U.S., they will deny the asylum because Canada is a safe third country. That means you could have asked for the asylum in Canada. So Mexico is your first, US second, but that Canada is third. So you could have asked for asylum in Canada, but you didn't. So they can deny that. You have to show you can't go any other place except to the US. Okay. So the bottom line, the requirement is prefer, no, don't file a, if you're over 18, don't wait more than a year to file for asylum. Second, it has to be under those five grounds that you mentioned, which Correct. are Political asylum, opinion? Political opinion or political group. Okay. Religion. Religion. Social group. What is a social group? Um, social group is a characteristics that you belong to that you cannot change, even if you wanted to change it, like you're gay. Okay. Or um, you're from a particular, like, women from Guatemala that are subject to a particular type of abuse that can't get away from that abuse. It's an immutable character that you cannot change and you shouldn't be required to change it. Just okay. Have you had any cases that are under that category? Yes, we've had a lot of cases under that category. It's also a very, very different, mm -hmm. difficult category to prove. We've okay. proven some of them and we've been unsuccessful with some. But typically, it's pretty much the most complex area. You know, your political opinion is easy to show if you can. You have a political opinion. Or you belong to a political group you can prove that easily if you're filing on based on your religion you can prove that easily because yeah i'm a christian or i'm a muslim or yeah I'm but a if Hindu. you're gay um, or if you what about domestic abuse is that one of them or not really domestic abuse is more of a case law um qualification meaning on that matter of R M matter of ra which was a case where the board of immigration appeal after years and years and years and years of litigation finally recognized that domestic violence constitutes a basis for asylum of course when president trump came in the attorney general at that time revoked that case and canceled it i do believe it's been reinstated now again okay. but you know domestic violence can it's just like social group it's very difficult is very litigious and it's very contested. The easiest ones are your religion, your political opinion, or if you belong to a social group or your ethnicity. Ethnicity. Let's like say you're from a tribe. That everybody is trying to harm because of you're from that tribe. That is correct. Okay, thank you. So those are the requirements to file for asylum. To file for asylum doesn't mean just because you file for asylum, you're going to win it. That is correct. Uh, number four. Can I file for asylum in my native country or do I have to file when I'm in the U.S.? Asylum, you can file it when you're in the United States. When you're in your native country, you'll be seeking asylum most times as a refugee. So you can file, you can request it either way, either places. It's a lot more difficult to seek asylum from your country than it is to seek it from here in the United States. Okay, so there we go. Uh, yes, you can file from your country, and yes, you can file here in the U.S. There's correct. a process, and that's what leads us to the next question. Where and how do I file? Well, you file asylum to the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, 
once you prepare your application, which is on the form I-589. I-589. Okay. It sends to USCIS. The form has the address, whether it's the Chicago lockbox or, you know, wherever it's being sent. I believe it's the Chicago lockbox. You send it there. It generates an A number and a receipt for you and you filed your asylum. That is proof that you filed it within the one year once you filed the asylum. Now, this is something obviously that everybody can do on their own. Everybody can do it on their own, but it's always recommended to use a lawyer, a professional is like, I'm sure you could, you know, cut out your own appendix, but it's recommended you go to a doctor. <laughs> so that is a good one. Obviously in your office, you sit down with the client, you consult and you tell them if they are eligible or not, to for, for asylum, you give them a checklist of the requirements. That is correct. You um, educate them on the subject of asylum. Correct. We're not just going to file for an asylum. We want you to understand what asylum means before you can file for asylum, that right? That is correct. And then you take care. They don't have to figure out how, where it does it go. You guys take care of that. That is our responsibility. Okay. Correct. That's good. And you follow up uh, with them. If they get an appointment, you notify them and, and you go with them to the interview that and stuff correct. like that. Do they still do interviews in person or they're doing online or how does it work? Still in person. It's taking a long time now to schedule because of the corona and the novel COVID-19. But yes, they still have to interview you in person. How long does it normally take in an asylum case? From beginning to end, depending on what stage you win or lose, it could go from anywhere from two years to ten years or more. And the number one question that people ask is like, what am I, like, what am I going to do? while it's processed am i protected can i get a word from it can i am i can i get deported or what's the deal when your asylum is pending you cannot be deported that is the law okay. now while the asylum is pending depending on the clock and how and when you filed you may or may not be entitled to a work permit um, other than that you're going to be allowed to stay here until the case is fully adjudicated and if you don't have a work permit during that process then you yep. have to save savings to sustain yourself you or be way family with a way to survive does that mean that because you are in the process of asylum they're also going to give you like food stamps and stuff like no that? you do not want to take public benefit unless you're qualified for that so don't do don't take any public benefits mm -hmm. talk to a lawyer uh to see what you can do in that do while the process while the case is in pen, uh, pending you don't want to harm your case correct uh, now the last question what makes a strong asylum case um, what makes a strong asylum case I think the first thing that makes a strong asylum case is truth you know be uh, honest correct so um, obviously if you have experienced threats or persecution and you can tell your story in detail with specificity specificity and consistency that is a very strong asylum case whatever threat or persecution you suffer must be on one of those five reasons that makes it a very strong asylum case so for your asylum case to be strong you have to be honest okay. you have to testify specific consistent and honestly number three your asylum or persecution has to be on one of those five reasons and you have to be internally consistent your story just has to be true and specific don't say oh some men came to my house and they wanted to kill me why well i didn't know who are these men i don't know they are the pandillas that's not going to get you asylum but if you're able to say oh this political party or this group who is led by a man named jacob came to my house august 15th 2006 at 4 p.m and they threatened my life with a gun the gun was black and it looked like it was loaded they pointed it on my head right here on my forehead or they slapped me right here on my chin the more detailed and specific you are and the more consistent your story is meaning if they ask you the same thing 10 times, you tell the same story the same way all the time because it's just the truth. Okay. The stronger your case is. So details, number one, be honest. Number Obviously, because if you 
you if you like you get busted you get you will get busted and obviously your own testament <laughs> will be okay you're saying something different so Correct. what's that's why you say be consistent because if you didn't mention before but now you mention it why didn't you mention why it you didn't mention before so is that so i guess you help the clients oh we, yes we take, you? we take their affidavit we review their story we ask them the questions we believe immigration will ask them that way their story is clear in their mind and is consistent hopefully they'll be able to follow through and articulate the same information yeah because i mean anybody can get very nervous about telling this especially if this was a traumatized event correct right yes. uh, if this is within a try you don't want to talk about it but you have to do it that is correct you have to do it so the more details things that you don't want to say because you feel shame that you did it this information is confidential they're not going to share this info the u.s no. government is not going to share this information to your country because no, you feel like if i if i'm a uh, let's just say i feel i have a union right mm -hmm. and i and then i have my own political opinion and the government doesn't want me so i'm fleeting i'm going to leave my country to come here mm -hmm. and then i'm going to talk to you how can i trust them that they're not going to tell my people my country that i'm here and then they're gonna you know so i don't want to give a lot of details but you're saying it's confidential give details that's what makes a strong case details 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 give dates. us an example of one case that you say man i wish i had more of these cases because this is a win-win case or it was a beautiful case it, mm -hmm. it's a good example to there was, follow there was a case we had of a gentleman he was from well, you don't have to say the country. <laughs> you know, an African country. He was a political organizer for a cause. And when we were hired, because he came here on a visiting visa and he seeks asylum, he was able to bring out his membership card. He had newspaper information. He was able to describe the organization, list all the members, tell his opinion, what they represent, what they stand for. He gave the dates he was threatened, who came and threatened him, even if he didn't know their name, he was able to give a clear description of the guy who was afraid. He showed that he reported it to the police, he gave the date, he made the report, what they said to him. He didn't have the report, but he was able to give specific details, time, where, location, the house, where everything happened. The story was internally consistent and the, the asylum officer granted him his asylum. And how did he did this like everything? He just have a very good memory or he wrote it down and then he brought it to you or we discussed the case at length, we probed his mind, we asked him questions, he had to go remember things, he has to go get documents and make sure his story was solid based on what he experienced. And when he went to the interview he was able to say those things on his That own? is correct. Okay. And his lawyers were were there with him. Okay. Wow. And then you say, Okay. The, what was the officer's expression when he hear all these things? The officer was sad. Um, they do want to help people. Uh -huh. And he was also very kind and granted him an asylum. So he didn't have to go to court? No. He granted at the... Yes, at the yes, level, correct. Isn't that nicer than going to court? That's when you end up getting your papers <laughs> in two years or less. Oh, okay. To go all through the ten years. So once you go to the interview, it takes time to get a decision. And if the decision is not favorable, they cannot deny it. They will just refer you to see an immigration judge and give you a second chance to present your case again. So that means I go to an interview, they have to wait for a decision. If the decision just say, yes, we believe your, ca your case is solid, True. so we're going to give you an asylum. That means I have to wait how long? What, it, what does that mean? It's automatic from the day they approve it to the day you get your asylum status. Okay. Then you have to wait one year after your asylum status to file for your green card. So I don't get a green card when I get an asylum? You get a green card one year after the day of your asylum approval. And my green card is permanent? Your green I don't card have to file card. like a temporary, like a... You get a 10-year green card. 10-year green card, and then after five years, I can file for citizenship? That is correct. If I'm good, right? Like if I don't no break any laws? No criminal record, person of good moral character, pay your taxes. If you have children, pay your child support. So I'm good with that. Now... I go to the interview, my decision, they, they don't deny me. They just say, we, we didn't approve you. They have to send you to the so judge. I'm not, the asylum office is not going to make the decision. You're going to go to, in front of the judge. That yes. means you're going to court. That is correct. And then they'll send you like a court notice. Call the notice to appear and NTA. Okay. 
And that's when you really need to go to a lawyer and say, okay, Absolutely. I need representation. That is correct. Okay, sounds good. Well, anything else that you would like to add? That's all the questions that we had. Well, the only thing I'll add is it's best to go to the lawyer before you get referred to the judge, before you even file your asylum. That way, he and you can go through your story and make sure that it's detailed enough, it's consistent enough, it's specific enough, and that it is legally sufficient to give you an opportunity to try to win your asylum. And if you have any questions about the services of BAMO and Ibokwe Law Office, feel free to send us a message in the red, uh, the red message or place a comment and we'll be happy to share that information with you as soon as we can. Also, I would like to thank our wonderful sponsors that make this happen. I first want to uh, give a shout out and thanks to Linkua Academy. It's an academy online, one-on-one -on -one with professional tutors, and they teach English as a second language, professional English, and also Spanish, professional span Spanish for specific purposes. Uh, make sure that if you have any questions about them, we'll be happy to share their information. Also, Bangwani Wukwe Law Office, our wonderful team of lawyers, they're always here to help you. We want to thank to our sponsor, and Garcias and Associates, our lovely, lovely sister that helps the community when it comes to car accidents and uh, PI cases and workers' compensation. And our lovely ladies from Revive Hair Salon that makes this happen. So thank you for our sponsors and for continuing to be nice to us. Um, I want to thank you for all of you for joining us today. And make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you can get more of this type of information you share with everybody. And then make sure you follow us on social media. Like I said, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Um, uh, if you want us to bring another guest, if you like to hear more of a specific topic, make sure you put that on the comment below or you send us a direct message. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.